we need to talk about probably one of the biggest pieces of news to drop over the last few days. We unfortunately are talking about an injury update with Sam Mewis. Sam Mewis taking to her personal social media channels and putting out a statement about uh, really an update on her current timeline and injury. Um, she revealed that she had an additional surgery uh, on her uh, on her leg and she will begin a rehab process closer to home so that mm -hmm. she can continue to be supported by friends and family. And she also stated that she has no timeline for her return and that she thanks everyone for the support and the well wishes. So uh, a number of things, I think, in, in, in this statement, right? First of all, first and foremost, tough. You really are just kind of like, God, like this has been sort of a, a nagging, ongoing thing for Sam Hewis. We're entering really a, a new year of this for her. She, for people who don't remember, uh, Sam Hewis already had, I believe it was an arthroscopic uh, procedure that was done on her right knee in, in, I believe, post Olympics. So we're talking August, mm -hmm. 2021. There was a trade that took place between North Carolina Courage and, and and Kansas City, and she found a new a new market, a new environment, and she was really um, eager to to get back to to playing after rehabbing. And um, she she, she played about two games. games. Yeah, she yeah. played in a couple of Challenge Cup games, and um, but unfortunately, forty five minutes each though, limited minutes. Yeah, and I think and this, this, was, this was coming minutes. off of post. Yeah, this was coming off of like post rehabbing from that first surgery, which is smart. Like you're you want to build up a player coming off of of a rehab stint. Um, but unfortunately was unable to kind of really come out of preseason and really kind of come out of the challenge cup. So she's unfortunately was shut down in an official capacity during, uh, Kansas city's really their championship finals run. Um, I think there was always that possibility that folks were taking a look at and saying like, Oh, maybe we'll, maybe we'll see her later and maybe yeah, we'll see her yeah, later. I'm and sure then not. I think very wisely Kansas city, and probably in, in collaboration with Sam Mios, we're like, actually, let's put a statement out and let's actually we're gonna we're gonna shut you down for 2022. Yeah, we saw that kind of we saw that drop late in late in the season for Kansas City Current. And now this is the most recent update. And I think with this, we talk about it in a sense with not only does it what does it mean for Kansas City, but obviously we talk about it in a in a way and, and what does it mean for for the United States women's national team. Yeah, I think uh, first and foremost, I, my heart breaks for Sam. It, it truly does because it, this is her passion. This is her job. This is what she wants to do. She just wants to play. She even talked about that in her statement saying that uh, it, she, it's been devastating for her to be away from soccer so long. And, and that's one thing that I want to make sure we echo here at Attacking Third, right? Like best of luck, Sam. Like you got this keep your head down, keep grinding. I mean, it is so difficult to go through an injury or not be able to do what you love um, no matter what. And then to be so publicly in the eye about it and have to give public updates about how you're doing in your recovery, especially when they're not uh, overwhelmingly positive updates. It, it's not like, Hey, I'm back training. I'm back. I'm, I'm touching a soccer ball again. We're doing these things. No, it's, it's not like that. So my heart breaks for her. And she even put in there in her statement out that, her last procedure was 2021. And I know we just talked about it being right after the Olympics before the season started, but to think of it in that timeline that she had a surgery in 2021 that she was trying to get back from and the struggles of that. And sometimes surgery doesn't go the way you plan. Sometimes your recovery doesn't go the way you're planned. Sometimes your body is just telling you things that you don't want to hear. And the fact that she is getting another surgery is, is positive. It means that there was an issue and she's trying to fix it. The doctors are trying to fix it. Um, I, I really commend her for her honesty and her transparency with people that are not owed anything to her recovery and what she's doing in the public eye saying that she doesn't have a timeline to return to soccer. And I can't imagine how difficult that was for her to wrap her head around, to understand, and then to verbalize for the public to hear. Um, but I think it's important for us here because we do break down soccer and we talk about the analytics of it to talk about what this means for Kansas City, a team that signed this player and got 90 minutes total out of her in, a in two Challenge Cup games that 
um, it, it looks different for them. And, and of course, Kansas City has been in the know about Sam and where she's done. And, and perhaps hindsight is twenty twenty because now we understand a little bit more why Kansas City made so many moves for their midfielders. Vanessa DiBernardo, yeah. Morgan Cattrall, Dabinia. It makes a lot of sense now that you know you're not going to get a Sam Mewis. Um, yeah. And, and you know, we had, future, right? when we were analyzing, when you and I were analyzing – that stretch of the offseason. I guess technically we're still in it, but we're mm-hmm. kind of transitioning into preseason here now that players are reporting to market and we're getting these preseason rosters. But we chatted about that when these moves dropped, when the free agency frenzy was consuming all of us yeah. um, and Kansas City was leading the way. And, and while we were very impressed by their offseason, while we felt like they were kind of winners of the offseason and by extension the draft, um, there was still that question mark. It was just like, okay, well, where does Sam Mewis fit in here yeah. with a lot of these pickups, with a lot of these these draft picks, you know, and, and what is that going to look like? And um, all those questions that, that that kind of keep coming up when you have such a prolific player, right, who's been absent for an extended period of time. Um, obviously, I think when you put those two together, they're just like, okay, well, this makes sense. So I think in, in terms right. of Kansas City, it sort of feels like they were – making sure that they had prepared to, to make sure that their team had options in the middle, but it was very, I thought it was good to sort of see in, in Kansas city current when, when they dropped their preseason roster, I thought it was, it was good to see that within it, they made a note specifically of about Sam Lewis saying that Mm -hmm. they have bought out her previous contract. That's why she's not listed on the preseason roster, but they brought it out through 2023 in an effort to allow her to just focus Focus solely on, on on rehabbing and, you know, all of her, um, her new, her new junior journey in front of her. So uh, I think that was important to know, because I mean, you're putting, if you're putting out your preseason roster and you don't have one of the biggest names in soccer listed on there, there's going to be even more questions. Right. So I think that the timing of all this, I think, sort of made a lot of sense with right yes with their, them dropping their roster and then sam u is making her announcement and as far as for me like what i think it means for the u.s women's national team again i think it's just more confirmation i think that was something else that you and i've been chatting about for quite some time we've had to follow this U united states women's national team through a, a unique journey of, of absences uh, and injuries, players out of maternity, play, players uh, suffering season-ending injuries and, and making their way back. Um, and within that, we've had to, to navigate a, a, a World Cup a qualification process. We've we've heard a lot from Blacko Andonovsky um, constantly talking about those injured players or those absent players. And for a very long time, Sam Mewis was was considered and sort of put in and spoken about by Andonovsky as part of that larger group of injured players who were unavailable for the team at the time. And he started to change the tune on that a little bit towards the end of the year and specifically within this January camp in New Zealand when he was asked about it specifically, kind of didn't really want to comment on a timeline for Mewis or her availability for the possibility of another World Cup. And now here we are a few days later with more confirmations of all these things. So, um, you know, I think that's going to be the next phase for the United States women's national team. What are they going to do now that they have that confirmation? I mean, what is uh, now that the public has the confirmation. Vlako Anonofsky is known. He's been in talks with her, even in media availability. When people are asking him, hey, what's up with Sam? He says, hey, she's working on a recovery. We don't have a timeline. He's been mm-hmm. saying we don't have a timeline for months because he didn't have a timeline. She doesn't have a timeline to return. And I think that it, the U.S. women's national team has been without Sam U.S. for 18 months, right? Since, since the Olympics, essentially, um, because of – her recovery and her rehabilitation. So it's yeah. it's not like she's just all of a sudden out now and it's a scramble yeah. to find a replacement yeah. and to find a, a fix in the midfield. Black Wendonofsky has been dealing with this and, and understanding mm-hmm. that Sam Mewis is not going to be available for him as as much as he wants, right? If at all available to him. So he's been finding other solutions, dropping Lindsay Horan back a little deeper. Most recently, we saw Rose Lavelle dropping into that number eight role in the midfield to, to play that uh, little mix between a defensive and an mm-hmm. attacking midfielder. And I think that the solutions are there. I think this is more so for the fans that have held on to 
maybe a little bit of hope and said, Hey, Sam's going to be there. We are yeah. less than six months out from the world cup. Yeah. Even if she had a timeline that was three months back to touching the ball, like, oh I, I don't know like what you do at that point, because we're so close to a world cup. I think that for Sam, it's got to be focused on your recovery at this point, focus on getting your body back to being okay to, to everyday life. Right. That, you're not in pain daily, um, let alone playing soccer and playing 90 minute games every other day for a month and a half. So uh, best wishes to Sam for sure. I, I think it does turn a little bit of a page for the U S women's national team, mainly the fans to say, yeah. let's focus on what we've got the roster that we have and, and mm -hmm. what we can do and support. And I think we'll, we'll learn a lot more in that February window during yeah. she believes when the United States gets another roster pick, they get really good high quality competition against Canada, Brazil, Japan, and that'll be the test. And I think what we see from the U S women's national team roster now moving forward is going to be it for the world cup. Oh, hundred percent. They, they've are the coaching staff already making reference that they've uh, are narrowing down the pool even more. They had it at 40 now sort of coming out of this January camp. It's around 32 players that they're examining in the buildup to the world cup. Um, and I'm with you in terms of, you know, maybe turning a page for, for fans who have sort of been looking for updates and things like that. They have it now. So, uh, yeah, I think we're going to get some more answers in, in February, mm -hmm. specifically during the She Believes Cup. It's something that we're going to have to continue to keep an eye on and chat a little bit about what we think works, what we think doesn't work. Um, and that is uh, right around the corner. It's going to be here sooner than we think. So, but for now, best wishes to Sam Mewis. We hope that she has a great and speedy recovery. Um, she's been on with Attacking Third before and done interviews with us, and we appreciate her time and her professionalism as always.